ukama ubuhlobo family talk on the capital crunch an honest look into the joys blood sweat and tears that shape family relations and impact society you're listening to Ukama Ubuhlobo Family Talk here on the Capital Crunch with me, Penny Pangeti. And as I said, we're joined in the studio by Tafadzwa Mukoi, who we love to call Coach Taf. And we're asking about that question. Young people, laziness, lack of motivation, what can we do about it? Coach Taf, thank you for joining us in the studio. What an honor. Thank you so much for having me, Penny. It's great to have you here. That's exciting. I love your energy. I feel like we're already like, <laughs> we're already going to... Let me to tell you something. Like, this is... Th- the only thing that I sell is my energy. You can right. take everything else from me, yeah. but don't take my energy away. And I don't think it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like my signature. My currency is yeah, is, is my energy. energy. There you go. And I don't think we'd be able to take it away from you <laughs> anyway. Like you have to be really yeah. powerful to be able. to I'm do excited that. to be on Capitol. You yeah. know, this is really, really, really cool. Yeah. So we're glad to have you. Yeah. So we're talking about you know this interesting topic about young people and the sentiment that people often have about young people is that they're lazy, they're entitled, um, they're not doing anything to develop their communities, yet at the same time are complaining that things aren't working well. Right. What do you say about that? Well, I think that, you know, one of the things that when I was, when I was growing up, I used to keep a little book and I would write uh, quotable quotes. Mm-hmm. A- and the one thing that I always liked to say was that I'm not lazy, it's just that I like to rest before I work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, if, if anybody, you know, in, in, my, in, my, in my life, I've learned that if I could get paid for doing nothing, I'll do it. Yeah. And so unless we equip our youth to understand that nothing comes while you're seated there, then we have a problem. So he, here's my take on this. Right. Number one, we have an awesome responsibility to pass on to the next generation a value system that says we've got to work so that we can produce and so that when we produce we can be able to have fruit when we have fruit we can then um, sell that fruit for a profit and we can save some money there's a whole list of things that we need to do yeah if we don't set that good example then we have to do it by being a horrendous warning really yeah so kids can see and I had a meeting once with this guy and he says, Taff, don't even worry about what is happening in our world. Because a, a season is going to come where our youth are going to see and they're going to realize, you know what, the way my parents did it, my parents' parents did it, something's going to give. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that if we have to become a horrendous warning, then our children are not equipped to, be, to do what they need to do. It means they've got to start from where they didn't even know they needed to start from. Right. So as parents, as society, as a nation, we have to set models. Mm. When we set fantastic, phenomenal models on what they must do, hey, train up a child yeah. in the way that they must go, so that when they get older, they will not depart from it. Yeah. Why are we allowing our children to be um, to spend so much time on these gadgets mm-hmm. when we grew up without? Yeah, it's our fault. Right. Why are we not disciplining our children to understand? Depending on who I could tamba entertainment, mm-hmm. I'm cool with people having entertainment, but not having an, a lifestyle of entertainment. And, and by the way, this 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 is not a lifestyle of entertainment. Be a presenter. Yeah. You are presenting. Musicians are, are are performing. They are working. Right. But for you to be receiving entertainment all the time and doing nothing about it, then there's there's a problem. You raise an interesting point about the models that we need to be in raising our children. Right. And I have to ask you the question. We, we often hear people saying you can only parent in the way that you were parented, right? So you, what you learned in your home growing up as a child is what you're going to pass on to your children. So do you, can we really blame parents for the, the, the struggles that they are in if they never learned how to do it properly themselves? I'm going to ask for forgiveness for what I'm just about to say. Uh-huh. Rubbish. <laughs> that is utter rubbish. Yeah. You, you, you will parent the way that you will parent. Right. Because the way you... S- <laughs> and I love being in Africa. Mm-hmm. Because you're not parented by your parents only. Right. You're parented by the whole village. People can see. So what we have, we look at the John's way of parenting. You're like, oh my gosh, if only those guys were my parents. Mm-hmm. So you've already got a particular model and seeing how those people are being parented. You look at your lifestyle and you say, Ish, I wish my parents would have done this for me. You look at Sarah's uh, example and then we've got multiple models. Mm-hmm. And so we choose out of that and say, this is how I'm going to parent. Mm-hmm. So we're not, we, of course, th- there's a, a phenomenal um, impact that our parents have on us that they make us parent our children. But Takafunda mm. Ogoman, we, we, we know how to parent. We know what we expect from our children. Surely in this day and age, yeah. we've seen how sport, for example, 
is making people do very well. Mm -hmm. Music. And when we were growing up, our parents didn't like that. Yeah. Are we saying that that's exactly how we are parenting our children? That's totally no. rubbish. We're yeah. not doing that. They've, there's enough examples. There's, there's the internet to tell us what we can expect. But definitely, there are certain value systems. Mm. What I think that we get from our parents is a value system. Mm. A value in terms of education, for example. When, for example, my son. My son is a great athlete. Mm -hmm. He's grade seven. He loves soccer. He's this 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 season. He scored thirteen goals in his in his in his um, league. Yeah, he's the top goal scorer. Yeah, but I'm the value system that my parents gave me is to say Chikoro first. Right, that's still there. But I also take him to the academy that he goes to. Mm -hmm. So I'm teaching him to be able to manage his different talents. Right, Nekuti one zipo, and if we don't promote those gifts then we've got a problem because, you know what, as a Christian, mm -hmm. you know, that I believe that God's gifts are without um, uh, repentance. Mm -hmm. They're irrevocable. Mm -hmm. So no matter how much you stifle that, that kid is still going to do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. So our responsibility as a new age parents is to say, okay, what is in my child and how do I draw it out of him so that he can become what God has created him to be? Mm -hmm. Because we're basically created for two things, mm -hmm. to glorify God and to edify others. Right. And if you're doing both of those things, and then you fulfilled your purpose on uh, the planet. Sha, you're, you're, you'll be kind of like me. <laughs> <laughs> Winning at all things. <laughs> so, so. If you say to the child, who is saying, I don't like the way I'm being parented, hold on for a moment. Okay. You're being parented, your parents are not your friends. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. Even my kids, my kids have, know that very well. Yeah. You are my children. You're not my friend. And so I'll parent you. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to parent you in the way that I think is going to work for you. Mm -hmm. But you know what? At the end of the day, there's one thing that I always used to f struggle with my mom. Mm -hmm. Rugby. Oh my gosh, she didn't want me to play rugby. Mm -hmm. And so I had to be able to then convince her to say, Mom, I understand you don't like this game or my sports. But I needed to show her that I can excel in other things so that I can earn her trust. Right. Kids... A hundred percent. And I think you you point at something really interesting mm. to say um, there is this attitude of give, 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 allow, allow, allow for me to do those things. But with nothing on your part, what have you shown me as a child to prove to me that you can actually handle these things that you're saying you want to do? So so, so I like I like what you're saying. Uh -huh. So my son will spend a lot of time on the Internet just studying Ronaldo, mm -hmm. studying Messi, studying all these Pogba's and all of those guys. And he comes, he gives me stats, dad, all of this and all of that. Yeah. And, and, and and if it ends there, then I have a problem. Then I'm going to say to him, okay, son, on the field of play, what are you doing? So I, he's got to show me. Don't tell me. Show me. Mm. Show me that you, I can entrust you with the future that I'm preparing for you. Mm. And so that, that's it. Kids, wake up. You need to do your stuff. You've got to make, make your hands dirty before we can entrust you with the things that we want to give you. And you know what? As a parent... I can buy my son. You know, the other day I actually made a mistake. Yeah. I bought him a second pair of shin pads uh -huh. because I'm <laughs> super excited about what he's doing on the on the on the playing field. Yeah. I had to buy, and I got there and I said, "Sonny, I saw these uh, shin pads. I thought you'd need these." And says, "Dad, uh, I had another pair. I already have a pair." And so I just want the kids out there to know that we are prepared to break our back as long as you show us that you've got a brain inside there and that you've got a vision that you're pursuing and you know that there are responsibilities that come after whatever careers you have and that we will agree that you've got to you've got to learn you've got to be educated and then you can pursue whatever it is that you need to pursue so let's talk about the young people who've now gotten the education great zimbabweans are well known for putting a value to an education kids will be sent to universities in london universities across the world doing a wide range of degrees they've done a lot they graduate their parents have spent hundreds and thousands of dollars on them they come back home they're driving dad's car they're living in dad's house they're getting an allowance from dad what are we what is happening there what can we do to motivate those ones who've gone through all of those things that you're talking about with your child yes degree i want a very good standard of degree but then they come home and they want to spend time with friends and driving the car around what's happening with that sector so so i'm, I'm excited that you use the right word mm -hmm. the word, word you use there was degree right it's a fraction right you see i i have an op i have the amazing honor of running a business mm -hmm. And I get to interview lots of people. 
And the one thing that I do is that I go on their Facebook page so I understand who they are. Right. And so you come here and you want to show off a degree and half of, the, half of that degree is copied because it's assignments that your friends <laughs> gave you. I've been to university. I understand how it works. Yeah. And so don't come around flying your, your, your degree and, and, and telling me that you've got a degree. You only have a fraction of what I need. Everything mm -hmm. else from this moment, what a degree does, it tells you that you've got capacity to learn. When you've learned, you've got capacity to execute. So I'm expecting these kids to come after they got all these degrees to tell me what is it that they want to execute on. So I'm expecting two things from them. Right. Number one, Zohar Funda, what is your enlightenment? Uh -huh. Okay. And then you tell me that, you know what, because I've got this, I'm enlightened in this fashion. I would like experience, exposure, and expertise in these areas. Right. So it's the four, four E's. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So enlightenment, show me. Show me where you're going. What did you learn? What, yeah. what, what is the thing that is happening? I mean, I, I, I travel quite a bit. And the one thing that I've begun, that I, I noticed a couple of years ago mm -hmm. when I went to uh, Singapore is that you get into a, 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 a park, every single thing that you do, you get a photo and they'll sell the photo afterwards. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. So like walking into Capitol, we have photos taken. And by the time I leave, you're going to say, Coach Taff, would you like to buy this for $2? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so now all these kids, we've taken them all these places, but they don't come back with that intelligence. Mm -hmm. They're learning about what is happening on the IT, but they're not doing it. Mm -hmm. So what's the point? Yeah. We're waiting for me to give you a job. Okay. If you want a job, I'm happy with giving you a job. Yeah. But when you want a job, tell me what you're going to do. That is going to change. That you're going to say to me, listen, eh, some koi, but funda. When I looked at your company, this is the value that I can add. There's more than enough people who've got ideas in here, but they're not telling us what they can do. Mm -hmm. They're sitting there and complaining. I'm tired of listening to people who want to complain. There's too much opportunity in this world. So people are weighing in on this discussion, Coach Taff, mm. and uh, someone is saying, Tafazwa, what about a kid who always wants cash? cash without playing her part. So this is probably someone who's gotten that education. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, they want cash. So my response <laughs> to that person, <laughs> yeah. my response to that person is, why are you give, why are you continue giving them cash? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, what they need is shelter, which is a roof over their head. And they want food, which is what you're giving them. Right. And you probably have got internet, so they must be applying for jobs in the, or they must be coming up with suggestions. I mean, for crying out loud, if you're at least giving them internet, they can be running a social media uh, campaign for Coach Taff. Right. There's a job for somebody else. Yeah. They ne don't give them money mm. because they teach them how to earn money. Mm. Because if you continue giving them money, then what's the point for working? Because what on their in income? You are their income. And you know, that's we interesting. Pay our, uh, you know, it's interesting what you've just said. I've heard kind of young people saying, mm, there's perhaps there's jobs out there, whatever. But if I'm going to earn $200, why should I wake up and go? Because my dad gives me that in pocket money. So there's no motivation to leave the house. And that's actually a, a clever brain because you're thinking, mm. I can earn this amount of money without expending the energy. So why bother? These kids are very smart. Yeah. They will be able to see, they create a system. They say, listen, uh, 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 they weigh the, 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 the cost and they say, listen, 200 bucks in my pocket mm. from my dad is better than 200 bucks. I told you earlier on mm -hmm. is that I'd rather get paid for doing absolutely nothing than for me to work. Yeah. Work. Yeah. So, so that's an important uh, work uh, and thing that we must teach our children. Our children must work. Yeah. You'd never know. Even the guys who've won jackpots, there's history, there's, there's stats to talk about this. They lose their money because it's not, they didn't work for it. Mm. If you work for it, when you, when you sweat, when, you, when your blood comes out, you value it. Yeah. Work is, it equates to some degree of value. Right. So my response to that parent or, or sister or brother, whoever you are, is to say, withhold that money. Mm -hmm. Please withhold it. You're not being a cruel parent. If they if they have had some food, they won't die, which is yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. If they are sleeping in your under your your roof, which is also cool, they will figure out that one day they've got to earn their money. Right. And the important thing is they have to start from somewhere. Give them that opportunity to start from somewhere. Right. And that two hundred bucks will soon put one more zero, will be two thousand, mm. another zero, twenty grand. Give them that opportunity. Right. So one more question, right. uh, Coach Taff, before we let you go. Lorraine in Greendale says, I've been trying to get a job for my daughter for a long time. We paid thousands uh, for her education outside of the country, and her father and I have really been struggling to get her motivated to do something with her life. Every time we speak to her, she says, it's pointless to try to find a job here. Then she does nothing after that. What do I do? First of all, don't get her a job. Why are you getting her a job? Right. She <laughs> must get herself a 
a job because at the end of the day she's going to come back and say you know what and i'm doing it for them mm. tell her to get a job she must tell you what she wants what's the point of doing it here great tell her to go and do it where she thinks she can do it right let her f let, give her the freedom to fail mm. Let her explore. If she wants to go back to the UK or the US, let her do it. Facilitate that. But set boundaries and say, listen, this is what we're going to do. There's one thing I'd like to say quickly, and our time is running out. Mm -hmm. Parents out there, when your children are now going to tertiary education, may it be a loan to them. Right. It don't pay for their school fees. It must be a loan so that they can pay you back. There's no motivation to work because they've got no debts. Mm-hmm. They must understand they're owing people money. So don't get them a job. Tell them to get their own job. Find out what it is that they're passionate about. They must pursue that. And then also let, let them go into the environments they think they can, they can excel. Because their mind is saying that they can excel. If you're forcing them to be here, they won't excel. And I love that point about loaning for your education. Absolutely. My children know that. Because this is the thing. We know young people go in and start a degree in law. And then you jump and I'm now doing graphic design. And I'm, I'm now doing this six, seven, eight years in university. Because someone else is paying. Oh, well, they're going to pay me back. When you're paying. You're going to pay me back? Yeah. Because I'm going to pay At the time you hit uh, university, you're 19. That's one year as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a grown up. You're you owe adult. me. You owe me. I promise right. you. That's Coach Taff and Coach Absolutely. <laughs> Coach Taff will be joining us every Thursday here on Ukama Ubuhlobo Family Talk. And if you want to start asking Coach about any of the questions that you have, things that you're struggling with, things that you need motivation for, Coach Taff is here to help us in that regard.